we're about to make is the boomerang plane, and what you want to do is start with the short side of the paper up, U.S. letter size paper, so we're going to start by folding it in half. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is find the center of this crease that we just made, and we're just going to make a little pinch, we're not going to make a full fold. We just put that corner to that corner and then carefully make a pinch right there. And now we're going to find the one quarter point, just halfway between the center and that corner. And again, we're just going to make a pinch. We're just marking the one quarter point. Now we're going to use the one quarter point and this corner to make a crease that runs right straight here. And so we'll just use those two landmarks to make a crease, folding that one corner over. So now we're going to do what's called a squash fold. And to start the squash fold, we're going to lift this corner that we just folded. And you'll notice that you've got two layers here. We're going to open up this layer and that original center crease that we made, this folding the page in half, we're going to use that crease and press it right down to where those layers meet. Uh, and now we're going to take this uh, flap in the front and we're just going to fold it behind. Now we're going to start the, the most complicated part of this plane is taking these corners up here and putting them in these pockets. So let's start by moving the corner where it's going to be. It's going to be right straight at the bottom of this triangle. See, we've got a little flap here that we created. This is the pocket that I was talking about. The pocket looks right there. So this corner is going into that pocket. And the first move is to put it down there about as far as it's going to go into the pocket. So let's do that. I'm just leaving about two millimeters of space at the bottom of the pocket for that to fit in there. Let's go ahead and do the other side at the same time. Uh, so now we're going to actually narrow this point small enough to fit into the pocket. You can see it's much too wide. So we're going to start by moving this guy up. And you have to be able to see the pocket underneath here. I'm going to lift this for just a second. This crease that we're making here is going to make it so it fits into that pocket there. So we're making that just narrow enough to go in there all the way down to the point. And that's kind of a weird move there. I'm going to hold that up so you can see that. This is the edge of the pocket and this is the new crease that we made here. And now, now that it's thin enough, we're going to put it into the pocket. So you just kind of press the pocket open and take that corner and put it in there. We're going to use the front of the pocket here as a limit. And we're going to try to get this corner here as close to this center crease as we can. So again, the front of the pocket and try to get that corner to touch the center crease. Now we're going to flip it over and insert the corner into the other pocket. Try to give you an okay look at that. Open up the pocket just enough. To insert that flap in there. And this corner, just touching the center crease, again, are the limits. The next move is to broaden the wings out again. Uh, we folded the wingtips down to the center of the plane, so we're going to move them back to the outside. There's one side done. We'll flip it over and do the other side. And now we're going to do something real crazy. We're going to squash that flat. So we're going to start by picking it up and opening the two halves of the plane. And notice that as I squash a flat, you've got these two corners here. You want to keep these two corners lined up at the center. Press them together at the center and then squash the whole thing flat. Uh, now we're going to flip it over. So this folds right straight down. Line up the corner, the top point with the center. We're going to follow this crease right here. Fold the plane in half. And remember these little layers that we used as limits here. Uh, they are right next to the layers here that we're going to use as limits for the wing folds. So leave this guy folded in half. We're going to pull the wing over. The wing fold is going to be parallel with the main center crease. The wing folds, the wings are going to be the same height at the front and the tail of the plane. And the crease is going to be parallel with this center crease. That's a, a really important deal. And you fold it over just enough so you can see a little triangle forming right here at the wing crease. So take care that these guys are parallel. We'll flip it over into the other side. So now let's do winglets. And winglets should be parallel with the wing crease. So wing crease here, winglet is going to be parallel here. This just comes up that much. It's about a third or a little bit less than a third of the whole height of the wing. And you want this crease to be parallel with this crease. Move in the same direction. So let's flip it over, make the other wing match. So unlike most paper airplanes, the boomerang plane, the wings are going to droop. Uh, positive dihedral helps the plane rock back to neutral. This plane, the wings are actually drooping in a negative dihedral or anhedral fashion. And that, along with where the center of gravity is, helps the boomerang plane circle back.
we're gonna fold the Boomerang 2, and the folding is very similar to the Boomerang 1. First couple of moves are gonna be very familiar if you just folded the Boomerang plane. And we're gonna fold it in half. And again, we're gonna find the center point on this crease right here, making a little pinch. And now we're gonna find, again, the uh, quarter point by measuring the halfway point between the center point and that corner. And we're gonna use this quarter point, we're actually gonna make a crease all the way up this time, uh, and we're gonna use that as a reference point to begin the folding uh, sequence here. So let's move that quarter point over, line everything up perfectly, make a nice sharp crease. So now we're gonna fold this corner over, and we're gonna fold it over in such a way that it just comes to rest against this vertical crease here. So we're folding the corner over, it's gonna hit there, and then again, you're going to the top left corner here. And again, we're gonna run the same sequence after we get this small triangle made. We're gonna do a squash fold, which is lifting that flap, opening it up, and then moving the center crease down to the center of those layers and pressing it flat. Of course, we have to fold this flap behind before we start moving those guys into pockets. So let's start by bringing this corner down just short of the bottom of the pocket. Make a crease, let's flip it over, make the other side match. Again, we're taking this corner just short of the end of the pocket here. Uh, and now we're gonna narrow this corner so it fits inside this pocket here. So we're gonna take this corner and put it into the bottom of the pocket here. So we're narrowing it right here. And now we're gonna put it in there. And again, we've got this weird bubbling configuration. And this time, the front of the pocket is still gonna be uh, where we wanna go in terms of the limit. And the back of the plane, you're gonna try to line up this edge with this edge. You're gonna try to keep these edges, this one sticking up here, right here, kind of parallel with this guy here. So here we go, we're bringing that down. We're gonna squash it flat using that front of the pocket as a limit and try to keep that edge parallel with the back edge here. Now let's flip it over. And now once again, we've moved the wingtips to the inside of the plane and we wanna widen those out so we've got enough uh, you know, airfoil there to keep the plane aloft. So we're gonna make a crease that goes from the front of the pocket to this rear corner here. We're just gonna move that layer up. Do the same thing to the other side. Let's flip it over and moving that guy up. And now that we've got our wingtips uh, fanned back out, we're gonna squash fold the whole body of the plane. And we do that by opening up the center crease. We're gonna open this crease here and start moving these two corners. These guys here are gonna move down. You can see these guys. We're gonna move them down as we pull the layers to the outside. So we're gonna take this corner and move it up just so that it's right along this edge. So these guys started here and they're going up like this. And now we're just gonna reverse the direction of these creases so that those two tabs are sticking to the inside. There's one done. So I've just started here and I'm just tucking that under using the crease we just made as a reference. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. And if you feel underneath here, you can feel all the layers kind of ending right there. I'm gonna take my thumbnail and just follow that right there. And that's gonna provide a reference for moving this fold over to here. This is again, we're making the landing gear here. So I have a reference for moving this layer over. So here we go, let's move the layer over. And now we're moving this fold over. Now we're gonna go ahead and make wings. We're gonna follow this center crease and fold it with all the layers on the outside. And you're gonna do an exact measurement here. It's, you're gonna measure it using one of the layers on the other side. So you have to pull it over and now you're seeing this layer here. This layer, where this layer ends, is gonna hit the corner of the plane's fuselage here. So you wanna roll this over, and when that layer just touches the corner underneath, you have to keep peeking and sort of doing this a little bit by braille. You get a little bit closer to the nose and roll that over and hit right there. So uh, let's flip it over. The main thing is to make the other wing match. And when I fold this corner up to make the winglet, don't go past this layer right here. This is a really important layer not to go past. Just go to that or just a little bit short of that. And the winglet should be parallel, going the same direction as the main wing crease. This little uh, crease here, making the winglet, same direction as the main wing crease. Let's flip it over, make the other winglet match. Very good, okay, so the folding is now complete, but it's all about the adjusting on this guy, even more so than the boomerang one. So we're gonna start by lifting the wings up 
and lay the plane on its back, and now we're gonna lift up those landing gear folds. And now we can flip it over. Now we're looking at the top of the plane. Now let's lift those winglets up. And now you're gonna do a couple of things to this plane that you would never do to any other paper airplane because this guy flies a lot slower and it doesn't fly very far. So step number one is to make a weird adjustment on the nose here. We're actually gonna bend the nose down a little bit like that so that the nose intersects the wing crease with this weird little bend here. And that's important when the plane is upside down, believe it or not. This little bit of a, a trick right here helps keep the nose up when the plane is upside down. And the other thing we're gonna do, which you would never do to any other paper airplane, is work the main center crease back and forth. Flex it back and forth a bunch. There it is, the Boomerang 2, ready to fly. We're gonna do the bat plane, which did not start out to be the bat plane. I think this is the second plane that we're doing that didn't start out to be whatever I wanted it to be. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take creases from this corner to this corner, the long diagonal here. So here we go, we're gonna fold from this corner to this corner. It may take you a little bit of time. So I got pretty close. So now we're gonna open that up. We've got this corner to this corner, now we're gonna do this corner to this corner. And I'm using my thumbnail to sharpen these creases. You could use a folding tool. Some people like to use a ballpoint pen cap. Now we've got a big X in the page, and we're gonna make a crease that hits the center of both of these outside edges here. Just flip it over, and we're gonna fold it in half, just like you would start almost any regular paper airplane. That crease is gonna go just like that. We're gonna do what's called a, a water bomb base. This crease that we just made down the center, just press right straight down, where all of the creases meet, just until the paper pops, like that. Now, let the sides come in and the top come down. So the next move is to take the right-hand side and just following this layer underneath here, we're just gonna move it over. You can move this, think of just moving it as far as you can move it, really. Moving that layer over. Now we're gonna take this corner and move it to the top. And now we're gonna swivel the whole thing back to the right-hand side that it came from. So we're gonna do the same thing with the left side. We're gonna swing this guy over. Looking pretty good. You can see the shape is starting to form. Now we're just gonna add a little more weight to the nose by taking this top down to the bottom. Just folding straight down. Uh, now we're gonna fold about a third of this distance here. We're gonna fold this guy back up. How can you tell how much a third is? Well, the part on top of this crease and below the crease will be the same distance. That's how you can tell how much a third is. Okay, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna fold it in half. I'm just rotating a little bit so I can fold it in half. And again, match up these corners here, these guys here, match those guys up. Don't worry about the center, these corners here so much. Don't worry about those. All right, now the, there's a little bit of mojo here with making the main wing crease. And you really want to hit it where the layers, are, there's a little gap in the layers. You can kind of feel that. If you just pivot the wing over a little bit, you can start to feel where the loose part is. Just let that fold happen right there where the loose part is. And flip it over and now make the other wing match. The other wing should move down in a very similar way. We're going to take this long edge and put it against this edge right here. We're going to unfold that. Then we're going to take the shorter edge up here and move it right against the same raw edge here. So, and now you've got this crazy looking thing here and we're gonna pinch that corner together like that. Okay, let's flip it over and make the other wing match. Now we're looking at the, uh, the underside of the plane and we're gonna fold them over, start at this corner and go over about so that you're three millimeters at the trailing edge. So it's a really thin little slice of wing here and you're gonna do both sides. You could hold the wings together like this and make sure that they match. And now we're gonna use our thumb and kind of round off the leading edge here. This is an important adjustment. Keeps all of the layers on the wing go in the same direction and kind of lock together a little bit. We folded with heavier paper to get you through the folding process first time, but this thing will really flap so much better if you use a really lightweight paper like nine pound onion skin, or if you can find one of those things called a phone book. You can go back in time and find a phone book, rip out the pages. That's really nice lightweight paper that flaps really well. So the key here is to get the leading edges 
kind of locked together with a little curve there. And you'll have to play with the leading edge droop and the trailing edge up elevator to get the right flapping motion. So we're gonna do the tumbling wing next, which really isn't an airplane at all in the conventional sense. It's not made to fly so much as it is just gonna fall in an organized fashion. So we're gonna take one strip of paper here. It's about two inches wide and the length of a phone book page, around 200 millimeters by 50 millimeters if you're into the whole metric thing. And the first move we're gonna do is just fold that strip of paper in half. Uh, and now we're going to fold down about two millimeters, both edges together. We're going to hold this guy together as we fold both uh, edges down, about two millimeters, two to three millimeters, just right straight across. Take your time. Okay, so that's really the hardest move is to fold both of those top layers down at the same time. Now we're going to unfold everything, those two top layers and the center layer. Uh, so now we're going to put a winglet on either end. One end is going to go up and one end is going to go down. And so we're just going to fold over about a thumb width. So that's going to be, you know, 20 to 22 millimeters. Flip it over and then fold this up. What we've really got here is one end up and one end down. And you want to make these guys have 90 degree bends here. And when we're getting ready to get this guy to tumble, this top edge is going to point the direction of travel. So if this top edge is pointing away from me, the plane's going to rotate backwards and move forward like that. And the other trick to getting it to uh, fly straight is to watch the wing droop here. What do I mean by wing droop? Well, you've got one long, long edge down, one long edge up. So if it's turning to the right, like we can make it turn to the right if we just add a lot more angle on one edge than the other. Now when I throw it, it's gonna veer off to the right. So if it's veering off to the right, smooth that out. So again, Top edge pointed the direction of travel, and we're just going to drop it and let it tumble. There it goes. So this plane has such a low sink rate that you can counter that sink rate by walking forward with a piece of cardboard. With the top of the cardboard leaned slightly back, you're scooping up air. And as long as that air is moving up, the same speed the plane's moving down, it surfs right there on that wave of air. This is going to be the world record plane. It's named after my wife. It's named Suzanne. Short side of the paper up. We're going to take the top of the page and put it against the side of the page. We're going to make two diagonal folds here. Standard kind of diagonal folds. We're going to take the right hand edge just from the crease corner down to where this crease meets the edge of the page. And we're going to lay it against the diagonal fold. We're going to take this creased corner and bring it just to the end of this crease right here. Fold the top down and now you'll see those diagonal folds on the other side. What you want to do is line up the diagonal folds, the top layer of the diagonal with the very bottom layer of the diagonal on both sides and that's how you know you're hitting the center of the X dead center. What I find to be the easiest way to do it is to follow the creases on this side but if you can see them clearly on the other side and that works for you, go ahead and use it. Flipped over. We're going to take this flap right here and fold it up over those two corners and when we do the next move to fold the plane in half, the whole thing will be locked together. So let's fold from the top all the way down to the center of this edge to fold the plane in half. You can flip it over and make sure the rear corners and the nose are perfect. The center corners don't worry so much about. Um, don't spend a lot of time trying to line those guys up. The rear corners and make sure you're hitting the nose cleanly. Now, here's the pro way to do it. Makes your wings a little bit wider, makes the plane a more efficient glider. If you start here and don't make the crease, but see, you've got a little triangle that you can see here, made up from this raw edge and the back of the fuselage. If you keep pulling the wing down just until that triangle disappears, that is a much better place to make the wing crease. It makes the tail much broader, gives you much better lifting characteristics. So let's make the other wing match. That should be an easy task. Press it flat, keep going. You've just folded the world record plane, so clearly it's not true that you can't fold a good plane. So let's look at a couple of simple adjustments that are gonna work on this plane or almost any other paper airplane. So the first thing we do, we're gonna give it what's called positive dihedral angle. And what that does, when you hold onto it where all the layers lock and just lift the leading edge of the wings, 
Now you've got some upward sweep there. And what that does is put the lifting surface up over where all the weight is. So if the plane is flying along and it gets rocked to one side, just like a pendulum, the weight swings back underneath the wings, and that's called dead stick stability. So now, the plane is gonna fly along, the lift is back here, it pitches the nose downward as the plane's going forward. What does that do? That allows me to gain speed. The plane is being slowed, now I'm pointing the nose at the ground, gaining speed which is good, but now I keep gaining speed at 9.8 meters per second per second, it's gonna crash into the ground really hard. So, I bend in some up elevator back here, and the air goes down, the top of the wing hits that bend, gets kicked up, which pushes the tail down, which lifts the nose, and voila, now the nose is level again. So, enough up elevator, so at the right speed, the plane noses up enough to just achieve horizontal stability. That's the whole trick with any glider. You're constantly balancing that center of gravity, center of lift, and a little bit of up elevator to get that perfect flight. And that's how you break a world record.